Our second speaker is the founder of Student Educational Talks. You guys may know really well. He is also a senior majoring in business management administration. And he's also the director of creative strategy in the Kaufman Student Leadership Council. Give your hands up for Brian Falkenstrom. So, how's everyone doing today? Good? Good. All right. So, how many of you here know about automotive mechanics? That's about what I expected. So, uh, this is going to be a story about my father's 1991 Chevrolet Suburban, but I promise it's going to make sense. So, uh, this was a vehicle that he purchased brand new in 1991. Uh, it broke around 2005, and it sat in my backyard for about 10 years. So, what was broken? The flywheel is broken. For those of you who don't know, which I'm going to take as a lot of you, the flywheel sits in between the engine and transmission. These middle holes get bolted to the engine. The outer ones get bolted to the transmission. And what happens is, when you go to start your car, the starter grabs these teeth on the outside, spins the whole thing around, and gets your engine started. So what broke on this was a couple of these teeth chipped off, which is a problem because then the starter can't do its job. So, this is a very difficult thing to fix. There's a lot of parts that need to come out to get to this. So, this is a little bit of a layout of what I had to take out. We have the gas tank all the way at the back. We have the rear drive shaft, which is very large, you can't see it too well. The front drive shaft, because it, doesn't, because it has four-wheel drive the four-wheel drive transfer case, the engine, the transmission is still underneath the truck, we have the exhaust, we have the, uh, forget the name of that part, my bad, and then the flywheel. So, we started this project in April, and through on and off work, through some frustration, through some YouTubing and figuring things out, uh, this got finished in September. So that is a six-month project just to get this truck running again. And it had good results. We have a happy truck again. But what I learned is that there was a much easier way to fix this, something that probably wouldn't take six months. So you remember I said that some of those teeth broke, right? And the starter needs those to start the car. What you could do is there's actually a bolt on the front of the engine where you could spin the whole thing line it up so that way the starter grabs the teeth just before it breaks, it can get basically a full turnaround, and then you can usually start the car that way. And that is very clever, it would save a lot of headaches, except there's one downside to that. More teeth broke. So, that's the reason why it sat in my yard for 10 years, because my father decided to use that trick more than once, and suddenly you can't start the vehicle anymore. And that is an expensive thing to tow, that is an expensive thing to bring to a shop to fix. So how does this relate to the business world? Well, you have people in management, we have people in... Okay, I can do that. No? no? Okay, technical difficulties, but... We have people in management, we have people in finance, in accounting, who are going to be dealing with money. And this isn't an unfamiliar story when you have a long, long arduous process to fix something, or a quick fix. We can see this in 2012, Chevron had a gas refinery in Richmond where a pipe was leaking. So instead of shutting down the plant to fix the pipe, because that would cost too much money, they tried to fix it while it was still operating, and the entire plant blew up. So that's a little more expensive than shutting down for a day. In December of last year, Amtrak decided to run its new Cascade line in Washington without first installing positive train control safety systems, and on the very first run, that train crashed, killed three people, and 62 people got injured. Uh, Sears Holdings, in recent years decided to sell off a lot of assets to try to get rid of some of its debt, but now it filed for bankruptcy and its creditors are saying this brand has no value anymore, what's the point of saving it? And we'll even see in our local example, the MTA spent decades just patching old electronics, 
they actually bought an electronics company that was going out of business because they were the only ones manufacturing the parts that they needed for the system. And only now are we seeing them invest in modernization. So to any of us who are going to be making these decisions, managing our finances, managing people, managing time, there will be quick fixes to things. But I encourage you all, and anyone viewing at home, to think about the ramifications of what happens if that quick fix does not work. It can be costly, it can be expensive, and it can just cause some massive headaches. So please, while your truck is still running, take it to the shop before it's stuck in your yard for 10 years. Thank you.